So we were doing Lagrange interpolation. Let's continue with that. Yeah. Just a second. Uh, Lagrange interpolation. So interpolation, right? Given few points, uh, given some points on a curve, you find the entire curve. Okay. Uh, let me just uh, ask a few questions. Uh, how many of you know? I mean, how how many of you have seen graphs of polynomials? Who has seen graphs? of polynomials or graphs of functions you have seen. Okay, anyone else has seen? So uh, do you know that like if you have a two degree polynomial, then the graph would look like this. This uh, maybe uh, most of you would have seen, I don't know. But I have others, do others know about this? I mean, if you don't know, just say that is sort of Others, what about those who are in the more lower grades? Ishan and Aparna, do you have, have you seen? You have seen. Aparna, what about you? Not so far? Wait, I think her mic is off or something. Yeah. Anyways, um, okay. So what I'm just saying is that a polynomial is like a function. Aparna, if you can hear us, we cannot hear you so far. So. No problem. So a polynomial, we understand that it is like a function, right? It takes in inputs and gives you outputs, okay? So you can plot it. Now this is a very easy thing in some sense, right? So Px is like a function in X. You change the values of X, you get different values of Y. Okay, very, very easy thing. Basically, what is Lagrange interpolation? Lagrange interpolation says that, well, I'll give you a few points. I'll give you maybe any three points in the plane. Just draw three points at random, okay? like this okay three points are drawn just on the plane random thrown in the plane random okay i mean geometrically this is what the situation could be many times okay the points may be given first not thinking okay p of one is this p of two is this and p of three is this no you know arbitrarily you could just have three points drawn in the plane then we will then the question will come is uh find I rather, I would say that connect the points. Well, you can obviously connect the points, but uh, connect the points <clears throat> using uh, a quadratic, let's say, yeah. using a quadratic. Can we, can we do it? Uh, right, so uh, how, how would you go about how would you go about doing it? Coefficient. Ah, uh, okay, right. So those are some, um, okay. Right, so let me see if everybody understands this, that point. So when I say that connect the points using a quadratic, I mean, uh, so first of all, no, I'm, I'm looking, what I'm asking is that I'm looking for a quadratic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I am looking for a quadratic, which will do this. Okay. Does such a quadratic exist or not? Uh, we will answer that. I mean, that is not completely obvious, maybe. Satya is saying, yes, it exists. And, okay. but first of all, uh, you can see that this quadratic sort of goes downward when X goes to minus infinity and X goes to infinity. Is that okay with everyone? Okay. Now from here, Satya has made this observation that it means that if the quadratic is like this, then a must be less than zero. So exact value of a, nobody knows, but a, he's saying a must be less than zero. 
So Satya, maybe he knows it. So can anyone else explain why A must be less than zero? So without finding the quadratic, we want to comment on A. We want to comment on the sine of A. Satya, can you explain why A should be less than zero? But anything more, I mean, that is uh, like, a, that is like a restatement of what you have said. Any more, anything more you would like to add? Anyone? What any anyone? What happens if a is more than zero? Yeah. Huh. Okay. Yeah. So that's a, yeah, basically, uh, other than most of it is correct. But what I'm saying is that when X becomes very, very big, then, you know, we want a X squared to be less than zero. Right. So this is what this means, right? That the output is negative. It's the output is the height, right? It's where it's the graph in the Y coordinate and the output is negative after a certain point and also before a certain point. And uh, x square is positive. So the only way that could be negative is the sign. Okay. Is it clear with everyone? Pragdish, Aparna, is it uh, making sense? Mm. Uh, hello, can you say again? If somebody said, I don't know, I couldn't hear. Uh, Pragdish uh, and Aparna, Ishana, is it clear to, I don't know. Huh? X is always, X square will always make it positive, right? So the X square part is always positive. So A has to be negative to make the whole thing negative. Okay. Aparna, what about A negative? No, uh, so not always because uh, A, because there are other terms also, right? They could contribute to making it positive, right? It's only that when X becomes very, very big or rather after a certain point is when the AX square starts to dominate the other terms, the effect of the other terms. Right? When X is very, very big, like 100 square and 100. 100 square is much bigger than 100, right? But 2 square and 2, not much difference, right? Uh, uh, right. So it could be overrun by B. But when X becomes very, very big, then the other two terms start to start playing lesser of a role, okay? So these are all obviously they're all rough, uh, but but I mean this can be shown. Uh, but anyways, we did say we did try these things numerically at one point, but now let us just so that's open. Uh, what about you? Is it clear? Uh, oh, I'm not able to hear you. Yeah. Um, okay. So we'll, we'll continue. No problem. <clears throat> 
okay no but then i mean how do we find how do we go about finding the quadratic that is not yet answered just because a has to be negative it doesn't mean the quadratic will actually exist yeah how do we know the quadratic will actually exist Anyone? So, would anyone want to try this using Lagrange interpolation or solving uh, quadratics, uh, solving system of equations? Why should why should a quadratic exist? I mean, why should such a quadratic exist? Okay, let me see if you guys have understood the question. Can anybody explain what it means to say such a quadratic? Well, yeah, I know it means that passing through these three points, but what does it mean algebraically? And what does it mean numerically, like in quantities? What does it mean in that sense? Because uh, otherwise, how do you explain? When I say quadratic passes through the three points, how do you translate it numerically? Mm. <clears throat> yes, right. So if given the three points, so let's say I tell you that the first point is P1, second point is P2, and third point is P3. Then you have to say, well, okay, P1 has the following coordinates, X1, comma, Y1. I mean, you could think of it as numbers, okay? Let's just take it as numbers to begin with, okay? Let's just say it's minus one comma one, okay? And P2 is maybe one comma two, okay? And maybe P3 is, I don't know, uh, yeah, four comma one, right? So now from here, okay, so since you have got that system of equations idea, let me ask if anyone else can explain, given these three points, what will the system of equations be if you want to do it by that? Or not even using Lagrange interpolation, can you do the problem? Now the points on the graph are being told to you. How do you find the quadratic? Okay. And even Satya, so you can actually try to find the quadratic and tell me okay. by any way you want. And uh, others also. So just try this. I'll drink some water and come. Okay. Okay. So, anyone? Are you guys confused? Ah, tell me. One is equal to. Hmm. Okay. 
right so okay so fine you can solve this but I mean, are, are others confused like what what is the confusion so that minus 1 comma 1 on the graph means that when the input is minus 1 the output is 1 right p of minus 1 is 1 hey, this is okay right or is it anything confusing see the graph that's how we plot the graph that's how we choose to plot the graph and so if the graph is given that's what you interpret obviously you don't have to once you prove that a quadratic exists you don't have to always prove you don't have to always go to the polynomial numerically but what it means numerically is what you should all you should know I mean, that's what that's why i asked in the beginning do you know what the graph of polynomial means a graph of a quadratic let's say to begin with it just means that the x coordinate is the input and the y coordinate is the output yeah is it okay ishana is it okay with you do you understand right this is a this is just uh, something that you already we already know in fact uh, so fine you can solve the system and tell the answer but now those and everybody was there lagrange interpolation tell me the answer using lagrange interpolation this will take some time and uh, if it goes to four degree this method will not work setting up equations and doing it is a long way or and it's clearly a longer way okay so how do you do it right it's a longer way right because in this way you will get the polynomial in terms of you know x x square x q uh, one x x square and their coefficients and that is not a convenient way in this situation so come on so uh, using lagrange interpolation So we did some examples last time and I hope you would have tried some more examples on your own or, you know, from some book or anything, yeah. So we have three points, minus one, one, four. I mean, there could be, so the other thing, the points don't have to be one. Oh, so last time maybe I did one, two and three as the input sort of, right? But the inputs uh, don't have to be those points, right? It could be any points. And, uh, method has to be the same. Mm. Ah, if, and if you, if anyone is getting confused about something, try to understand what is it and tell me. Yeah, tell me. Uh, So we have p of four that is equal to one. Yeah. So now this no. So don't. Uh, what is it that is confusing? Yeah. There are three points, and uh, we would want to use this to connect and find the entire. I mean, so just like we did earlier, right? You make the you make compartments for each of the three points, right? You have a, you know, just a. In, obviously, we already have a formula which you can just write. Uh, if you have forgotten it, then you do it like this. It's no problem. So, uh, minus 1 goes to 1. So, what should I put in the first compartment to begin with? Uh, is it too easy? I don't know. Like, minus 1 is, uh, like, <laughs> say something. <laughs> In one, yes. 
Yes, right. You put one, and uh, so what do we put in the other compartments? Uh, no. Uh, but uh, we're keeping the point. Uh, sorry. So keeping the point minus one in mind. Uh, do we put in something in the second and third compartments? Uh, right, because when one comes, because when minus one comes as the input, the second and third compartments should be turned off, right? And so you put it. Yeah, so that's right. And so that's just x plus one. So let me just write x plus one there. Perfect. And in the fourth one, sorry, I mean, compartment representing four, what do you put in? Same thing, right? It's just these. Okay. And now please tell me the next one. Okay. So when one comes in, then what do we do in the compartments? What do we, how do we adjust? We divide the second and the third compartments by one plus two plus one or one plus one? Two plus one. Okay, two plus one. Uh, yeah. And the third one by okay, three plus one. Why? Uh okay, okay, fine. That's in so okay. And then um right that's certainly we have to do that correct let me write the two here uh, x minus two why x minus two uh, i don't know yeah because when one comes in yeah Maybe this two plus one and three plus one, would you like to review it? Should it be that or should it be, I mean, so I don't know. Okay. So when minus one comes in, right, they has the input, then I, I get one as the output here. But when I put minus one here, so this one obviously you have to adjust, right? Which maybe you were going to say, right? So when I put in minus one, yeah. So we just normalize it. Uh, it's a good practice. I mean, we have to, because this should be done really fast. Okay, but anyways, that's why we understand it by practice. And okay, so when when minus one comes in, then every it gives the correct answer. It gives you one. This entire sum of the first, second, and third term gives you one. So there is no problem. When one comes in, then as I understand it, when one comes in, uh, this one becomes zero, and this one becomes zero. Okay, but this one doesn't give me two. Right? It is not giving me two. Okay. So when one comes in, this becomes one plus one. Right? And so in the denominator, you should do one plus one. Right? Uh, so that is how you should work it out. And uh, uh, yeah, and let us see what we have to do for the final thing. Okay? So when four comes in, tell me what, what we should do. Mm, 
No, four is the input. Why would you put four in the third com part? One. Yes, exactly. Why should you put four? X minus four. So the but the moment you put x minus four, you normalize it with minus one minus four. Okay, so that when minus one puts comes, there's no problem. Immediately we do it. And similarly here you put x minus four, and again here because this is responsible for one, so you do one minus four. So there is no problem. And here you put one. Okay. But then again, you will see that this is creating a problem. So this will be four plus one, All right? Just uh, normally that's, uh, by this time it's almost, it's a formula and there's you no know, need to think also much, but one should always know the reasons because you can forget the formula anytime, okay? And uh, remember a formula is important, but the understanding goes a very long way in a lot of things. And then, you have to normalize, okay? So that's the thing. I mean, you you cannot go wrong if you understand it. If you, if you go wrong, you can come back on track, okay? If you understand it. And this gives us the answer. So this is like the third example we are doing. Is everybody comfortable with this so far? I mean, you may not be, it's possible because it's a kind of a new thing. It's a very new thing maybe, I don't know. And I will not, I'm not writing the formula for this directly. I could do that, but that's not very useful, I think. Please tell me. Okay. Not comfortable, then also tell. And we'll do one more example. Uh, no problem. The more examples you do, the more things you learn. I'm still teaching this and I'm learning some things about this. Obviously, not everything I'm saying, but the things I'm observing, things I'm kind of trying to see, okay. Okay, we'll do more examples. Is it okay? Is everybody comfortable with this? Okay. So go back when you, after the class or tomorrow, take some time and give yourself three points, uh, three, give yourself three inputs, zero, one, two, two, three, four, some, any three points as inputs, any three points as output, don't give zero, zero, zero. <laughs> any three points that are output, make a quadratic and then check or just write this equation like Satya did and solve. Do both of them and do, if you cannot come back and look at this or just look at the formula of Lagrange interpolation. Okay. Do it. If you don't do it at least five, six times, how would you get comfortable? With? Everybody should do. Shana, if you are also comfortable, you should also do. Do it with a cubic, do it with a four degree. You will see the power of this method. Okay. The using this, you mean the system of equations method? No, Lagrange interpolation will work. System of equations method will also work, but the system of equations method would take a long time. Okay, and well, the reason is that the system of equations method will return you like a whatever three degree or four degree. It will return you a polynomial like this. Okay, with some coefficients. Yeah, conceptually speaking, the system of equations method takes a long time because these coefficients can be awfully complicated. Even if the points are simple, the input points are simple and the output points are simple, the coefficients can be very complicated. Okay, so if you, and this is where we come to the last day's two homeworks, which we'll discuss now and try to learn things from there, basis change of polynomials. When you write your polynomial by this method, you know, this our, this polynomial, which is given, whose information is given in this way, if you try to write it like this, the coefficients can be very complicated. And so you'll be solving system of equations with complicated answers, so you will take a lot of time. Sometimes it may not be complicated, okay? But the correct setting, as the answer of Lagrange interpolation is telling you, the correct setting is to write the polynomial. This is a polynomial that we have found. Okay. The correct setting as Lagrange interpolation tells us. Okay. One will not, one may not foresee that is the correct set, set, setting is to write the polynomial using these blocks. 
because if you consider these as your blocks, right? Uh, x minus one times x minus four, uska coefficient, then s plus one minus s minus four, that coefficient, it's coefficient, and similarly, then it's coefficient, right? Then the coefficients are simple. They are not just numerically simple, but they are conceptually simple, right? Conceptually, they are related to the input output. And so the same polynomial, which has complicated expression in this system, in the traditional system, in this, in the you know, traditional, in the canonical system, then, but it has a simple representation if you try to write it in a different way. Okay, like a lot of things, right? When you factorize, they become so simple. Otherwise, the expression is very complicated. Or, you know, when you change the thing, it becomes very nice. So change the frame of reference. I was talking about this last day. It's like that. In the same thing, numerically, it becomes simple. Okay. So that is why Lagrange interpolation is, is effective. Kind of from the expression, you can understand the polynomial rele relevant to those three input points and things like that. So that's conceptually why, but my most important thing is this also practice these things, okay? And so with that, we close this chapter, we, we close this point here. And all the, what we have learned basically is that given any three points, you can connect it with a quadratic, okay? Well, any three point means you may get a linear one also. I mean, if I give you three points which are on a same straight line, then obviously you will not get a quadratic, you could imagine, right? you will get a linear in that case, but it's like at most a quadratic about what I mean. Okay, always at most a quadratic is the correct. Okay. okay. Right. Let us, uh, so now you guys have to remind me of the last day's problems because I want to keep the numbers also same so that, you know, if you have practiced, you can match things. So maybe I will call this topic, uh, yeah, so maybe I'll just 